Hello, welcome to the weather update. Nine o'clock, December first, twenty twenty-one, and uh, we're going to go over the climate for the month of November. I guess that'll be the first thing we will do. Uh, this is uh, kind of a brief chart here of of night November being slightly cooler. This is what the little uh, color coded here. You got a lot more day. You had most, uh, some days that were way above normal though. But one thing to note here is that the biggest departure were the on the above normal side. So. Nine degrees above normal on the ninth. Uh, Ten degrees above normal on the eighteenth. Uh, so we had some cold days here. Uh, the biggest departures were above normal. So it's one thing to note. All right. Uh, let's go now to the climate data here, and we'll go to our usual places here to look. Uh, we'll do the. Uh, monthly weather summary for Islip first uh, and so for Islip uh, our average maximum was 55.54.2 uh, the normal value for that is 53.6 so the high was still a little bit above normal at Islip the average minimum was 35.0 degrees um, uh, the normal average minimum 37.6 degrees so 2.6 degrees below normal at night it seemed like we were having a lot of good radiational cooling nights the mean 44.6 uh and the normal 45.6 so one degree below normal at ice all right and last year was a lot warmer Our last year's value was 49.4 uh so precipitation we only had 0.71 inches of rain. Very dry month. Normal value, 3.41. So that is 2.70 inches below normal for precipitation. So dry, cool, and kind of dry month. Uh, we had 13 days with light rain. Um, and see, 13 days with light rain. Which, despite it being a dry month, we had a lot of days with light rain. <laughs> 13 um but uh uh we had fair uh 12 days with fair it's interesting to look at this uh little parameter here as well now let's go look at central park so central park your average maximum was 52.8 normal value 54.0 the average minimum 39.7 normal value is supposed to be 42 so that means the mean was 46.2. And the normal mean is 48. So Central Park was 1.8 degrees below normal precipitation. 1.12 inches of rain at Central Park. That's well below normal. The normal is 3.58. So 2.46 inches below normal. So kind of a cool dry month, but at least it was cool. We were actually managed to get a below normal month in with temperatures, which is really hard to do lately these days. Speaking of rain, let's look at the radar right now, and you'll see that there's some pretty uh, steady, heavy rain over Pennsylvania uh, that will be shifting toward our area in the morning hours. Um, current conditions outside right now, we are generally around 40 degrees. Um, we had a lot of cloud, a lot of high clouds around today. Now they're really thick, um, but uh, you can see this is what it looked like during the day. Not really a nice blue sky, a lot of contrails, high clouds. Uh, that got thicker as the day went on. Um, and again, this is your sad light loop. You can see this it's really gotten thick now. Uh, so let's look at our highs and lows for the day. Starting off with our highs. We'll start off with the lows, I guess. Let's go to the lows here. So let's see what we got here. So generally mid-30s for our lows. 36, 35 at Islip, 30 at West Hampton. It's not too much colder at West Hampton, but there was some decent radiation cooling. The city still in the 40s. Um, looking at New Jersey. Um, let's see what they were at. Uh, a little radiation cooling there, too. A little 27 at Lakehurst. Uh, let's go to our high temperatures. Um, Jersey uh, got up into the low 50s. 52 at Tom's River. What about Long Island? A little warmer than expected today, I think. Uh, yeah, touch 50. It was 50 at Islip, 50 at Shirley, 50 at West Hampton. Now, this is fairly close to average for this time of the year. 
we slightly, ever so slightly above, but we will be going above normal for tomorrow. Uh, so let's go look at our models and see what we have uh, because we have this little area of rain that's going to be coming in associated with this uh, warm front. Then the cold front comes through in the late, in the, uh, late afternoon, early evening tomorrow. And then we get into the colder air flow here. Here's Friday. You can see that, but it's weak high pressure. A little clipper maybe brings us a little more clouds on Saturday. That high moves offshore. Then we get into a return flow. Here's a Monday. Cold front. It's generating a lot of snow along that cold front. I don't know if I'm buying that, but high pressure builds in for Tuesday. But then another system rapidly approaches with more rain for Wednesday. Uh, and then another high builds in for Thursday. Um, but you can see here. Kind of a, you can see, we do have a couple, it looks like it's bringing some more cool downs toward the end of the period, but uh, again, it's going to be kind of zonal, so there won't be any big cool downs, but uh, it won't really get all, the, it'll be a couple of warm days here and there, but not really anything too dramatic. Uh, let's go to the HRRR model right now, and we'll look at the zeros of the HRRR, this uh, rain that we're going to have moving in later tonight. So probably sometime after midnight, we're going to see this rain, light to moderate rain, and Maybe we wind up getting a little more rain out of it uh, than the past couple of storms. And then this is the cold front that's going to come through in the afternoon with a few showers, perhaps. Uh, and then that is gone. Uh, and then we may have some instability, some maybe some brief instability showers before 6 o'clock. And then they should be out of here. And that northwest wind takes over for Friday. And then here's that clipper that's going to start. This is that little clipper. That's Saturday's problem. All right. So let's take a look and see how much rainfall that uh, this uh, HRRR brings us, because I think we might see a little more in the rain. We're kind of really dry lately. And November was a very dry month. Um, not really bringing us a whole lot of rain. It seems to weaken the rain as it gets toward our area, but I'm thinking maybe it might be steady enough that maybe you might be able to get a quarter of an inch, maybe, but uh, so far still relatively dry. Looking at the temperatures, um, Probably not going to drop much beyond what it is now, probably in the mid-30s, probably. And then uh, for tomorrow, you're going to be getting close to 60 in Jersey. In Long Island, uh, you're going to be probably in the mid to upper 50s. Uh, and then the front comes through, temperatures start dropping tomorrow night uh, into the 40s, and then after midnight into the 30s. And then Friday will be a lot cooler with highs only in the, the low 40s. Um, look at our dew points to show you the airflow here. Here's the dew points. Um, not a lot of humidity. I guess that's why it's not really generating a lot of rain activity. The dew points don't really get that high. Have south southwest winds. Then they become westerly by evening. As that cooler air, drier air moves in, here's Friday. Where you can see it really drop off nicely with the, the, uh, the dew points. That's the drier air, cooler air, air, air coming in from Canada. Whether it'll bring us a clear sky or not, well, we're going to have to look and see when we get to that point. Um, but I want to go a little further in terms of temperature. So let me go to the GFS. This is the temperature. So here's a, for your here's your weekend. All right, so uh, you're going to see Saturday start to see a little bit of a return flow with the head of that clipper. Could be getting in the mid to upper 40s, maybe 50 in Jersey. Clipper comes through. Uh, but it really doesn't really make much of a difference. Temperatures don't drop that much. If anything, they get a little warmer on Sunday, closer to 50 degrees. And then it's Monday that we got this real surge of very warm air that could come into our area. And it's going to be warm, humid air, too. These dew points are going to be high, and that could bring the potential for some showers. And who knows, maybe even some thunderstorms. That's a ways out, but if we look at the precipitation meter you see and, 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 and but it's more of an anafront so the precipitation is behind the front and actually has some snow on the back side of it um whether i'm buying that or not is another story it's ways out and i'm not gonna if you can see the temperature behind that front is going to drop tuesday and then tuesday uh, by tuesday morning you are down to around 30 degrees and then for tuesday you're probably only going to be go, going up to around 40 uh, but then it warms once again right back up on wednesday again Another front comes through with another warm rain, then another front comes through, brings some cold air back into the picture for Thursday, and then more warm air for Friday. And then look at that. Next Saturday, uh, next Saturday could have temperatures possibly getting close to 70. Let's hope that's wrong. 
uh, more cold air comes in but you can see it's kind of you have a couple of really warm days in there but uh, you have some cold days too as well uh, so let's now look at the skies and for that I will we'll use the RGM model so here's the RGM model and you can see uh, as we go into tomorrow we're gonna have a lot of clouds uh, but when that when that war there may be a break in the afternoon where the sun will come out possibly between like I would say maybe one o'clock and three o'clock and then the front the cold front comes through with that chance of showers and then it clears out as far as Friday goes this is the question what is going to happen with Friday it looks like it's trying to move some high clouds over us but it's not really showing a lot of low clouds um, and as far as Saturday goes Saturday it has it has been uh, fairly clear but I'm not buying that I think there'll be some clouds around uh, on Saturday I really do think there'll be some clouds around on Saturday I think this is underestimating it uh, and then Sunday we're gonna have to deal with the cirrus so they really I still think your best opportunity for clear skies is gonna probably be Friday uh, this is the RGM model so now let me go to the NAM model we'll look at that model you know it's very hard to get a clear day around here lately yes tomorrow again plenty of clouds Friday really looks like it's the day that we would have mostly sunny skies you can see it's generating a lot of clouds and this is the name and look what happens as you get towards Saturday it's really generating a ton of clouds so yeah I mean just getting a clear day around here is gonna is very hard to do uh, Friday would be our best choice but again I think we're gonna have a lot of uh, that uh, Strout Lake effect stuff coming down uh, I think that's all the models that we have going that far out I can look at the GFS as well um, yeah you can see Saturday has us pretty sucked in on the GFS uh, as far as when we're going to get a clear day, I don't know when. This pattern, this zonal pattern that we're in is not a good pattern for clear, clear if you want clear days. It's very hard because the, there's not a really a big high pressure system to block the clouds. So it's, just gonna, it's a little disappointing to say the least. Um, we can look at a few more models if we want. Let's go to windy.com. You know, use this for the clouds as well. This is the European model, but we'll go ahead and we'll use this for the clouds as well. And we'll look at Friday. Uh, so this is the European model for Friday, 12 p.m. And that looks pretty good right there, all right? 5 p.m., pretty good. Um, Saturday, there's going to be some more cirrus around. I think that's what we're going to be dealing with on Saturday. So as you get toward the afternoon, I think there'll be some more cirrus. But I think I think it's cirrus because if we go and we look at the humidity again, we go temperature, humidity, and we raise this to 300 HPA, which is around where the cirrus clouds form. You see the orange? That's dry. It looks like there is some more over Jersey. But when we look at Saturday, you can see the blue. That means that there's a lot of humidity aloft. So uh, that means there could be more, some more high clouds around. All right, so this is a, a good tool to determine um, the clouds, the cloud formation. You can also use this to determine cloud formation probably at a, a lower level, like, a, like 800, 850. You can also use this. So this is an important tool to do here this is a little closer to the surface here um, so we'll have to see what happens but I think the threat the cloud uh, the best time to actually see some blue sky is going to be Friday but you may be dealing with some stratocumulus clouds mixed in with that blue sky um, but other than that uh, we're in this zonal pattern so I'll have some cold days and uh, but as far as tomorrow goes uh, it's going to be pretty warm we'll go to the Ventus sky and we'll look at the temperatures again for tomorrow um, tomorrow is going to be ridiculous uh, so here's uh, noon, and you can see Long Island in the 50s, but if you're in Jersey, you're going to probably be dealing with some 60s. Yeah, I see 61 in Tom's Service. So I think you're going to get above uh, 60 degree mark. Other than that, Long Island will probably be in the 50s. Um, you can see, again, very, very warm in Jersey. Very warm. Um, so let me just move this over to Friday just for fun. We'll see what this one has for clouds. Yeah, it's got a lot of clouds around. So, a lot of clouds. What about Saturday? Yep, clouds then too. So you just can't get. It's going to be hard to get a clear day, folks. It's all. It's disappointing. You want those sunny, clear days? They're so hard to get. They really are. Uh, all due to climate change, of course. You know, this is a. Uh, 
you know, if we had the right kind of pattern in place, um, then we wouldn't be dealing with this. But again, it's all it's all about the jet stream and what the jet stream is doing. And again, if we go back to tropical tidbits, or I could go to windy. If I want, I could use windy. It's fine because I can ch I can dip the wind off too if I want. Two fifty. Um, you can see the jet stream is kind of just kind of zonal, you know. This is the jet stream right here. It's kind of zonal, and that's the problem. You don't have really have it's a real zonal pattern with the jet stream. You can clearly see over here. Where I put the purple color here. This is it right here, and you can see it's just a west to east zonal pattern. Which means the cold air, the cold air is locked up in Canada, and the storms are racing from west to east. Uh, which means it doesn't really uh, give us an opportunity to have any big high pressure systems move in and give us any nice clear skies. And that's 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 the problem we're having. Here's a trough for Monday, and there's that trough that comes. Now we're looking at the European now. You can see it just kind of peters out. It's just jet stream is a mess. Once again, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.